National Championship Trophy and the National Champions are home and welcome! Keep it coming for the 2020-2021 National Champions, your big Gonzaga Bulldogs ran into the best team in the nation, the Baylor Bears. They jumped out to a 9 to nothing lead and never looked back. From start to finish, it was domination at both ends of the floor. Culture of joy on full display on national television all year long, whether it was unprecedented challenges like COVID-19, whether it was rarefied air, like winning their first Big 12 title and their first national championship. They handled it all with class. They handled it with joy. They handled every challenge that came their way. And they are the last team standing in 2020-2021. In just a minute, we're going to hear from some of the players. But we'd like to thank all of you all for coming out here today. It's been such a strange year, but to see the Baylor family here together in this moment is incredible. We're going to have Coach Drew come up this way in just a moment. They can come up this way here. We've got a special presentation, and we also will hear a little bit later on from some of the players. Hey, I want to say thanks to uh, Baylor University President Dr. Linda Livingstone. She's here. Yes, she is. How about Baylor's Vice President and Director of Athletics, Mac Rhodes? The coach of the national champions, Coach Drew. Well, thank you all very much for coming out. And uh, Brad, we see you. And we and, and we want to want to thank you guys very much for all the support you've given us for all the years. Um, I know personally, it's nice to be back in Texas with some warm weather. It's nice to be outside again. And, and I know these guys are really excited to get back to school. <laughs> All right, they didn't like that one. But hey, thank you very much for making a national championship possible, number one. Number, number two, I want to let you know that these guys, uh, they're going to do a great job representing Baylor University, our city, and our state uh, as, as they get multiple interviews and put in front of many people in the days to come but they will be the first Baylor team to win a basketball national championship. Please give it up for them! And it's great to bring another national championship back to Texas. Second time since 1966. Mac Rhodes, by the way, you were at that other school, so wherever you go, they win national championships. So we appreciate you, we thank you. actually have a special presentation here in just a moment. I'd like to invite the mayor of the city of Waco, a proud Baylor graduate himself, Dylan Meek, who has a few words for this team. Hey guys, how about, uh, how about this national champions, man? I have, a, I have a key to the city of Waco here I want to give to this Baylor team that Coach Drew. I want to thank you guys. Yeah, I'll give them. Woo! Thank you for embodying what Waco is. This is a city of champions. Sometimes we're down, but we persevere with excellence, integrity, and character. And that is what you've done. You've represented our city well, and what Waco's about, and where we're going. Thank you for who you are and your character. We love you guys. We're all behind you. And we're excited for what the future holds. So thanks for letting me be here today. Congratulations. All right. How many of y'all would like to hear from some of the players now? Yeah, we've got someone here with the trophy. Jared, let's start off with uh, you. Let's hear it for Jared, everybody. And you got the trophy here, Jared, the culture of joy. 
played out on a national stage, and when the clock hit zero, you were the national champions. What does this mean to you and your teammates? Oh, it means a lot, man. Just um, the culmination of sacrifice, all our work, dedication, you know, all the good stuff. Like, it's, it's real. You know, we set our goals up. We had a goal win a national championship, and we, we accomplished the goal. Like, you can set your mind to you do anything, man. It's crazy. And, uh, man, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all, man. Y'all um, done a lot for us, man. You need a lot. I love you too, man. Hey, how about Davion? How about the National Defensive Player of the Year? Mr. Off Knight himself. Hey, Davion, I'm going to ask you. You guys had to deal with something very different. Coming into the year, high expectations. You know, the number two team in the nation so-called at the uh, beginning of the uh, year, and you wore that mantle well, and then all of a sudden, you were the underdogs, according to some people in the national championship. What was it like for you all handling those expectations every step of the way, and then in the last game, getting to prove some people wrong? Uh, I feel like all year long, we knew that we had uh, a target on our back, even from last year, they took the national championship away from us. So we knew coming in, we knew coming in, we had to uh, work even harder and work even smarter. And I think we did a really good job of uh, staying together and uh, just praising, praising each other and then playing for one another. Davion, what's your favorite part of this team's culture? You guys do the little things. You pass, you set picks for teammates, you set other guys up for success. You certainly embody that with your defensive approach. But what's, what do you love most about this team's character? Uh, I think our, my favorite thing is our beast mode, man. You see on the court every time we either screaming or we yelling at each other. <laughs> it's just something throughout the whole game to give us our team the whole energy and just set the phone on the whole game. Very good. Well, hey, congratulations. Look, you still got your jersey on. By the way, don't take it off. I'm not going to take my jersey off. Thank you guys for coming on here. Thank you for support. We love you. Hey, what do we got about Maceo Teague right now? 14 first half points last night, stepping up big. You guys really set the tone early. First nine points, you had a big lead, and then you extended that out of the locker room in the second half. Talk about the team's approach. What you came out looking to do is you imposed your will on the Gonzaga Bulldogs. We just tried to share the ball uh, on the offense again, the locker room on the defense again. And, uh, I felt like we did a really good job with that and uh, playing for each other. You guys that came in, and a lot of people were talking about, you know, Gonzaga is the favorite. I think the national media focused on on that quite a bit. Is that something that you all noticed at this point of the year? You just out there doing what you do. Uh, we didn't have a choice to notice it uh, because the coaches showed us before the pregame. <laughs> so uh, they made us aware that we were the underdogs going into the game, and we came on after the game. Is it all the more special this year when you think about, you know, we talked about, you guys didn't get that chance last year. 2020, 2021 was a strange year, and then the tournament was in a bubble. What did that mean to you? What, what did it mean to come through all of that? Uh, it meant a lot to us uh, to show that we could persevere through anything. Uh, we tried to win it for the guys who didn't get a chance to play last year. Freddie Gillespie, Devontae Van B, and even uh, Bill KK over there. So uh, we just tried to do it for those guys, and uh, we were playing for something bigger than ourselves in the locker room. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what, what did it feel like when the clock hit zero? Sensational. Sensational. Let's hear from ACO. What about the villain, Mark Vettel? Mark, the guy who does all the dirty work down low, and he made life difficult for Gonzaga last night. Mark? I don't know if you noticed, but all I heard the national media talking about was Gonzaga's post players. Gonzaga's post players. Could Baylor keep up with Gonzaga's post players? You didn't just keep up with Gonzaga's post players. You dominated them. <laughs> Tell us about that. Uh, so, I guess it's just we had some dogs. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we went in with the mindset that um, nobody can mess with. We got the best guards in the nation. And I heard them saying that they got the best big, and not to get a disrespect. So, uh, Flo and John did an excellent job. They started, uh, those guys started, uh, they set the tone. They set the tone.
We looked, uh, you know, uh, Drew, uh, you know, Kispert and Timmy, you guys held them combined to 14 points below their season scoring average, while you guys as a trio, you Mark, uh, you Jonathan, and you Flo, outscored your season average, even as you did all the dirty work down low. So you exceeded uh, not only uh, your own, you exceeded not only the nation's expectations, but your own high standards. Saw you down on the floor, kind of on your hands and knees. What's going through your mind when you realize you're the, here's crying. <laughs> When you're the national champion. Man, if everybody know my, you know, how long I've been here and what I've been through, 18 years. <laughs> Since I red shirt, you know that uh, I've been a struggle. So, to win the national championship with these guys, these great group of guys and coaches and stuff, they mean a lot. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I ain't coming back. <laughs> I'm not back. We love you, though. I love y'all, too, but I ain't coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what's a what, what's a coach true bear hug when you've won a national championship like? Oh man, it's holy, it, bro. Like he, everything, he put everything into it, he trying to chin everything. So this time I caught him back, I gave him a big bear hug this morning. It's easy. Very good. Well, hey, we've talked a lot about the uh, the culture of joy, uh, Mark. What, what what does that mean to you now with all you've talked about your journey through the program? Are well, you looking at it? Man, you changed everything. Are you looking at it? I mean, look at it. Last question for you, Mark. I know you guys probably haven't got a whole lot of sleep in the uh, last 48 hours or so, but uh, it's been a strange year. You know, there are a lot of games. We would have had 10,000 people in the Farrell Center rocking this year, loud, when you guys were on your way to a Big 12 championship. Obviously, the year didn't allow us to do that, but were you able to sense what the Baylor Fredabelle family was with you throughout this, certainly in Indianapolis and Waco Life? Hey man, I seen it too. I seen everything that's going on down here. Y'all did y'all thing. I like that. Very <laughs> good. All right, open the floor. Anyone else have anything to say to the Baylor family? Is anyone else you want to hear from? Uh oh, Matthew Meyer. It's all right. I'm not Jackson Hall put up here with me, my bullet, bro. Get up here, my boy. Man, this year's been crazy for us. We've had so much fun. And uh, I mean, this has been such a special year just to experience this with all these guys and my boy Jackson. And uh, you know, we love y'all and thank y'all so much for the support. Can you go, Andrew? Hey, thanks guys for coming. We love you guys. Follow Jackson on TikTok, Jay Malford. <laughs> well, hey, we're not going to hear from everyone, but how about some continued cheers? How about applause for everyday John, for Flo, for LJ, for Jordan, for Zacho Adam Craig? Tear it for them. Your 2020-2021 national champions. Guys, let's cheer for them louder than you ever have before as we send them off. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's going to be more coming in the days ahead, that is. So stay tuned to BaylorBears.com. Watch Baylor Athletics on social media. There will be more to celebrate the national champion, so keep on the lookout for that. Thank you so much for coming out this afternoon and supporting the Bears. Sick'em Bears, everyone. The Bears are the national champions. We'll see you again soon at a parade.